Okay, so we're about to do a demonstration that I need to do in the hood. What I've got in a large test tube is a solid white chemical that is called potassium chlorate. Potassium chlorate uh, has a tendency to explode. It's sort of a finicky chemical that you need to be very careful with, hence we're using the hood for this demonstration. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to gently heat up and warm the potassium chlorate and you're gonna see it sort of become more molten. Um, it's gonna look liquidy and what we're trying to do is make the potassium chlorate decompose and as it decomposes it's going to turn into something much more stable which is potassium chloride which is an ionic compound. Well you'll realize that what we lost as the potassium chlorate went from uh, KClO3 to KCl is the oxygen. Where did the oxygen go? Well, the oxygen is going to be released as O2, oxygen gas. And what we're going to do is kind of silly. I'm going to take my friends, the little gummy bears in this package, and we're going to do the death march of the gummy bears, and we're going to toss them into the molten KClO3. Uh, as it turns into KCl and produces oxygen, the sugar that's inside of our gummy bears is going to have a combustion reaction and uh, we're going to see some interesting things happen. So here we go. So as I'm gently warming this, I'm starting to see the white solid liquefy a little bit. And you can see it collapsing just a little bit. I'm going to get some of my gummy bear friends ready. And then when it's all molten, I'm actually going to turn my gas off. And here we go. So this is a little bit odd for a demonstration and I'm really not going to do anything snazzy but I wanted to show you a bottle of what's called ammonium hydroxide. The formula is NH4OH. I'm going to lift the cap off and just kind of show you my reaction to the smell of whatever's coming off of this chemical. Are you ready? Mama, mama, mama. Bad. Very bad. My eyes are watering. I'm not kidding. This is not a joke. <coughs> Ammonium hydroxide is an extremely caustic chemical. It decomposes very, very quickly um, into two products. If you think about what we started with, there's only one chemical as the reactant, which is why this is a decomposition. NH4OH. This is decomposing into ammonia, which is NH3, a really, really smelly gas that you often find in cleaning products. The second product is harmless to me, which is H2O. But I wanted you to understand that things that decompose naturally decompose, even when you give them just a little bit of energy in the form of heat. In this particular instance, the ammonium hydroxide is so unstable, it decomposes just from sitting there. So I thought that would be interesting for you to see uh, and definitely interesting for you to watch me smell uh, because I would not want you to have to go through what I just went through for you. In this section, we will learn how to predict the products of a decomposition reaction. There are several ways to describe a decomposition, but I believe the most common way is to say 
that a decomposition is when one substance breaks into two or more substances. This often happens because the reactant is unstable. Sometimes the reactant is naturally breaking apart, and sometimes heat causes the reactant to break apart. Another way to describe a decomposition reaction is using letters. We can describe the reactant as AB because it's a compound, and over time it breaks into two or more things which we describe by the letters A plus B. A third way is visually. We can describe the reactant as a yellow circle and a blue circle combined, and as it begins to break apart, those two circles will separate. I think that decomposition reactions are one of the easiest to recognize, and that's because decomposition reactions only have one reactant. Some helpful hints for you as you start predicting products of decomposition reactions. There are common products that you should look for. If you think about decomposition reactions and why they occur, the reactant is often unstable. That means the products that we're looking for are fairly stable things. So the first few that I want to show you, you're going to probably recognize. Water we know to be a very stable compound. It's often a compound that you see coming out of a decomposition reaction. And another one is carbon dioxide. The third you might not recognize as easily. It's called ammonia, which is a very stinky gas. Some other things that you can look for are metal oxides, for instance, sodium oxide or magnesium oxide. And the reason why these are products of decomposition is because rather than having sodium metal or magnesium metal form, you need to remember that those are very reactive metals. It's very unlikely that something unstable is going to turn into something that's also unstable. However, a metal oxide, which is an ionic compound, which has a very high melting point, is a much more common product of decomposition. The last thing that I'll ask you to look for are simple elements, things like oxygen and hydrogen. I showed you two demonstrations of decomposition, so let's walk through those and see what they look like. The first one involved a test tube filled with a solid called potassium chlorate, and it was decomposing into potassium chloride and oxygen gas. We can write the formulas for those. You do need to remember your charges as you write the ionic compound formulas. The first would be potassium chlorate, which is written as KClO3, and that was in the solid state. Potassium chloride, which has a K plus one and a Cl minus one, would be written as KCl. And the product oxygen is the oxygen we would find in our atmosphere, which is a diatomic element, and so we write it O2. When you do your balanced equation, consider am I keeping the same number of atoms of each element on the left and on the right? And the first thing I notice here is that the oxygen atoms seem to be changing. And so now I go back and I think about the correct coefficients, and I would write that as you see there. Now the number of potassiums are two on the left and on the right, the number of chlorines are two on the left and on the right, and the number of oxygens is six on the left and six on the right. So we have a good balanced equation there. The second demonstration that I showed you involved a jug of ammonium hydroxide. And when I took the lid off of that, I could smell a very, very smelly gas called ammonia. And the other product, of course, is water. Now, going back to the tips that I gave you a moment ago, those are two of the most common products in a decomposition reaction. As a balanced equation, we have to consider first the formulas and making sure our ionic compounds are written in a neutral way. Ammonium hydroxide would be written as NH4OH, and that was in the liquid state. The smelly gas ammonia is written as NH3, and what's left behind in the jug would be liquid water. That is written as a balanced equation right now. At this point, I'd like to give you four examples of decomposition reactions. I'm going to give you the reactant, and I want you to stop the video and think about what the products are would be, and then check your answers. And don't forget to go back and balance the equations after you're done. In the first example, I give you 
the compound calcium carbonate. Notice how we have only one reactant. Let's think about the common products that we talked about earlier. Water was one of them, but water cannot be produced because there's no hydrogen in the reactant. Ammonia can also not be produced because there's no nitrogen in the reactant. So what could be produced is carbon dioxide. But what's the other product that forms? At first glance, you might think calcium. But again, calcium is a very reactive metal. It doesn't make sense for something unstable to turn into something else that's unstable. We mentioned that metal oxides are very common. So how about the compound calcium oxide? That seems like a better option. So our products are calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Take a moment, think about how you would write those products formulas. And the correct answer would look like this. CaO would be in the solid state and then carbon dioxide would leave as a gas. As written, that is a balanced equation. Going on to the second example. If we take liquid water, we can force water to decompose using electricity. But what could you make out of water? It doesn't make sense to create water from water. That's not an option. You can't get carbon dioxide or ammonia. Maybe we should go for simple elements. Think about what water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. Do you remember something important about those two elements? They are both diatomic. We would write the products as H2 and O2. Go back, balance your equation, make sure you maintain the same number of atoms of hydrogen on the left and on the right, and the same thing goes for oxygen. Our final balanced equation would look like this. In our third example, we take mercury-2 oxide and we start to decompose it. Again, like we said in the last example, I can't really see water being produced. I can't see carbon dioxide or ammonia. And as shown, this is a metal oxide. Really, the only possibility is for us to create the elements mercury and oxygen. Take a moment. Think about how you would write those two elements on the product side. The correct answer would be shown as mercury and diatomic oxygen. In the final step, go back and balance the equation, which looks like this. In our final example, I'm going to give you a really hard one, and this is probably not something that I would give on a quiz or on a test. But I think it's interesting to look at because there are many different things that ammonium nitrate can do when you add a little bit of heat to it. At first glance, when I look at this and I go through the tips that I gave you, probably what you would say is that this compound could make ammonia. That's the, the most noticeable thing to me. And then probably the other product that would be left behind is HNO3. Another option when ammonium nitrate decomposes is to create a lot of simple gases like nitrogen and oxygen. Notice that those are both elements. And then water is also a common product here. The biggest thing that I want you to notice about those products is look at how many gases are being created from a solid that we started with. The most important reason why I want to tell you this is because ammonium nitrate is a chemical that you find in fertilizer, and it is known to decompose and produce a lot of gases, which can make it very explosive if it were ever heated. These four examples show us some ways to do decomposition reactions, continue practicing, and I hope you join me in the next video, which gets into single replacement and double replacement reactions, as well as combustion reactions. Thank you for joining me. I hope this was a useful video.